Hello fellow 3D printers, I'm Jay Wall, Print That Thing, and today we're going to be talking about how to make 3D printed hats that are flexible. Yeah, and how you can do the same. Let's do it. Oh no, I broke it. In this video we're going to be talking about why you should be 3D printing with flexible material, or why you shouldn't be 3D printing with flexible material, um, how I went about 3D printing with flexible materials, uh, the kind of the pros and cons of it for 3D printing hats, and some tips for post-processing because I had quite an adventure trying to get this to look the way I wanted it to. So I love hats. I've always worn hats as far back as I can remember and I love crazy hats and I love 3D printing. So I just decided I'll just mix them all together. Eventually I want to create my own exotic line of 3D printed hats. Um, you know, just this crazy stuff that I can think of. Um, this hat is pretty crazy. This is one of the first ones I made. It's a low poly uh, wireframe hat. And you get some really, really crazy looks whenever you go somewhere. People either freak out in a good way because they love it. And they're like, oh dude, man, the hat, whoa, that's crazy, man. And I'm like, yeah, it's 3D printed. And then we start talking about it. Or it's the opposite where they're like, that is the ugliest fucking hat I've ever fucking seen. It looks so stupid. You look stupid. And I'm like, okay, cool. Yeah, it's 3D printed. And then I still talk to them <laughs> about 3D printing. But either way, it doesn't matter. Uh, and up until this point, I've always 3D printed this hat uh, with hard plastic and a PLA. And it's always like, you know, it's like, you know, it would barely move like this. But now I got some flexible filament um, from Barb 3D printing. And she sent me a ton of flexible filament. So one day I was like, I should 3D print a hat in flexible. So I did and it blew my mind. It actually worked. It did have some stringing um, across it and I had to do a lot of post-processing um, and you can kind of see little jiggity jaggedies. Um, but I wanted to share my process of how to do this. Uh, also give you the file if you want to 3D print your own hat or maybe spark some, some ideas of your own. So um, the only thing is that it is really slow and it is kind of tricky and it can get uh, kind of like tangled up in your extruder. Um, so we're gonna go over all that today and um, kind of how I got it to look kind of clean like this. So one of the things when I was 3D printing this, I was amazed that it 3D printed it without rafts or supports. It just kind of and just appeared on the print bed and then just came right off. Um, another um, thing that I really didn't enjoy about this process was how messy it looks. It's it's so much stringing. So I tried three different things. First, I tried a wood burner uh, that my girlfriend let me borrow. Thank you, Amber. And I heated it up really high and started like, you know, kind of like just melting off these little fibers. Uh, but it started fuming a lot. And I was like, kind of like, I don't think I should be breathing in all this melted plastic air. So I kind of stopped that after a few minutes. And then I tried another method where I just had some little little um, clipping scissors that I got with my CR10S and I started just like clipping off all these little spiderweb strands and it took forever and it was just really tedious. I think it, all in all it was only like two hours of cleanup but like I said I hate post-processing so I really wasn't about it. Um, and then I got um, some of those little 3D printing tools. Uh, they use it for other things, but I use them for 3D print tools. Um, I'll put a link in the description. Uh, and I, I would just, and so I took one of the tools that are kind of have a 45 degree um, angle and kind of just like shaved off the, uh, the little fibers there. And that worked really well. It was way faster. Um, you just have to be careful not to slice through, you know, one of the, the, the bars here, but, uh, or cut your fingers. They're very sharp. Uh, but I'll put a link to that in my, um, you can go to downloads and then my gear list. So I'll put all that in there. If you need any of those, they're super cool tools. So just a few tips when 3D printing hats with flexible, uh, keep your walls very thin. Uh, you know, this one doesn't really have walls, but I mean, even these bars are pretty thin. Uh, so it will just print faster. Uh, try and avoid support material or rafts. Uh, you can use it, but it just takes way longer and you have to remove it afterwards. So try and think of the design, you know, the end design in mind. Um, this one probably could have used a little bit of support material, but I didn't want to use it, so I just didn't. And I just wanted to see what would happen. Um, and another tip that I found out uh, while doing this is that you don't have to print 
as slow as everybody says that you do. I was printing at like 600 millimeters a minute, which is like uh, 10 millimeters a second, I think. Uh, very slow, like painfully slow. And so I started reading about things and just kind of went and just doubled my time. So I was printing this at 1200 millimeters a minute or 20 millimeters a second, I think is what it is, or 60. Um, but yeah, you can print this faster. Please let me know if you can, if you know of a way to print TPU or flexible filament faster or with a bigger nozzle, please let me know in the comments. I would love to experiment with this because I like to print really big objects and uh, you know, it takes a long time with this type of material. So anything you got, I'm all ears. And the third tip is have patience. Like I said, it is slower. Um, also check this video up here. I'll put a link in there for Chuck's uh, little, kind of like a breakdown of how to mod your 3D printer so it can uh, use flexible material and just some tips for printing. So if you want to 3D print this hat, it is available for free on my website. I'll put the link up here in my little third eye there. And you know, just download it. You can print it with PLA or TPU, flexible filament, and you know, good luck. I suggest no rafts, no supports, just you know, just just go raw with it, you know, and just get these crazy overhangs. You may have to do a little bit of cleanup, um, but that's how I do it. You can do this hat in about maybe 10, five to 10 hours, depending on your settings. Um, but go get that at the website. You can also learn how to make anything wireframe like this with Blender 2.8. Uh, you can take a free course. It's my Beginner 101 series and you can sign up at that website too and learn how to make any design really cool and wireframe, kind of low poly like this. So go ahead and take that if you're interested. And I will be selling these on my website um, soon. I don't know when, but we'll be doing multiple colors and different sizes. All I need is like the size or the dimensions of your head. Um, but it will be very expensive uh, because these are very tedious to make. Um, and I'm gonna try and get it to look a little cleaner, but you know, just one hat could take anywhere from, you know, 15 to 20 hours to complete. So, you yeah, know, it is a process. Also, if you 3D print this hat and you wear it, you've got to wear this hat. You know, you cannot let this hat wear you. And what I mean by that is you gotta like, when you're putting it on, you know, but you can't be like walking in like this, like, hey, hey guys, like all insecure and stuff like that. You've gotta like wear this hat. Like it is the dopest stuff you've ever worn. And just like walking like, yo, what's up everybody? Yeah. You know, just come and not even pretend like you don't even have the hat on. And people are gonna be like, they'll be looking at your head and they'll be like, and you'll be like, yo, you know, just don't even worry about it. And then they'll eventually go, what the f is on your head? What's that on your head, man? And then you tell them, you know, it's a 3D printed hat I made. Yo, yo, you gotta check it out. You know, all that stupid stuff. But you got to wear it with confidence. Otherwise, this hat is gonna eat you whole and you're just gonna look like a big dork like me. <laughs> but no, um, I've gotten tons of compliments with this hat, um, you know, festivals, events, just people like just freak out. It's just weird to them, you know? So that's why I wear, I like to just always wear 3D printed things just to start conversations with people. So it's a good conversation starter, uh, definitely. <laughs> also, um, I put my little logo here. I don't know if you can see it. I put my logo there, really proud of that. And uh, I print that thing right there. So, you know, support the channel, yeah. But yeah, definitely rock the hat. Don't let the hat rock you, um, unless you want to, unless you're into that. <laughs> so I originally made this hat whenever I had dreadlocks a few years ago, and I would like pull all the hair up and stuff it inside of here and it would look really cool. Um, so I kind of made this more for people with long hair or people with dreadlocks or maybe like afros. They will look really cool in this type of a hat. Uh, if you got short hair like me, it's probably gonna look pretty weird, you know, just kind of like, hey, good, like you're kind of sticking out of the hat. Uh, but you can wear it, you know, to each his own. Uh, but yeah, that's kind of what I made. I've also got a bunch more ideas of hats that I've already designed and ideas of hats that I'm gonna design. We've got another hat called the Bubble Hat version one, and that's more of like a Voronoi kind of bubbly hat uh, with a little bill. And you stuff your hair up in there or like a bun, and then you slide a chopstick through it, and it looks pretty cool, I think. Um, then I'm also experimenting with another hat that's called the Bubble Hat too. I know, very original. Um, but that is more of just 
a, of a sculpt that I did. It's very thin, but it's more of like a round hat with little bubbles all over it. And I thought it'd be pretty cool. Uh, so it's still not done yet, but I'm gonna be messing with that over the next few months. Um, and then we just finished a Mario hat. If anyone wants to go check that out, I'll put it up here in the eye. And that one was for Blender 52. Just learning how to make um, uh, the solidify modifier and making your the hats really thin. So definitely gotta 3D print that and flexible and see how that turns out. But you can download that at my website too. I got tons of ideas. I'm gonna do some hats like this. I'm gonna take a hat, you know, this is one of my favorite hats, just a little fedora or whatnot, but maybe doing some photogametry and scanning this hat and then adding some really cool effects to it and maybe make it look kind of like this, but you know, some textures and stuff and then printing it in flexibles. So I think that will be super cool. So leave some comments below if you have any suggestions for hats or if you have any workflow tips on working with flexible filaments, anything that could help me while I'm continuing this hat, 3D printed hat project or help anyone else that's watching this video and that can read the comments. So yeah, thanks for watching. Uh, like and subscribe if you enjoy 3D printing hats and I'll see you next week. All right, peace. Also, we're doing uh, live events every week. We're gonna do live 3D print training and then also a 3D printing podcast to just talk to you guys and girls out there about uh, what's happening in the industry, um, things that I feel like people aren't talking about. So we're just gonna bring all that up to the surface. So definitely go check it out if you're interested. All right, peace.